I bid you all good morning, good evening, and good night to wherever you be watching this transmission. Tis I, Mike Martins. Thanks for joining, liking, subscribing, and being part of the channel. The Voice of the Commonwealth with another special impactful edition as the world's going nuts. And what do we have to talk about today? Well, there's a lot going on around the world, so we're going to cover a little bit of everything. The red tsunami in the United States is major, and I've been warning people since January of 2022 to get out of the red state, the blue states of America uh, before b before the midterms get counted or before uh, try to get out before the midterms because I feel that something's going to go on and it's going to spark a lot of civil unrest. All right, guys, let's go on. Well, what do we got going on? Well, here it is right here. Guys, don't forget to follow us on Mike in the Nights. I have people asking me if I'm still doing Mike in the Night. We are still doing Mike in the Night. You need to go now to our Odyssey channel. And then when, when you get to our Odyssey channel, you'll find our back episodes of Mike in the Night, of course. But you go to content, and then you click on here. You'll find the last update of Mike in the Night. I tried to update the home tab here probably 45 times to put our updated live streams up here and fix these uh, playlists. But it keeps reverting back to this. I don't know why this episode, food wars, food rights, food shortages, fertilizer shortages from from half a year ago. I don't know why this one keeps coming up. I'm not sure how, to, like I've tried to fix it. So hopefully they get that sorted. And there's the upcoming episode of Mike in the Night if you want to join us. 466. And there it is right there. I can't really talk about what we're talking about on here. On other platforms, unfortunately, I gotta keep it on uh, on the down low. We were t we are 21 weeks out, and that's our prepper window. We are counting until this dark winter ends here in the northern hemisphere. All right, so what do we got here? Well, let's jump into Canada right off the bat. Feds hold groundbreaking ceremony for Moderna's mRNA vaccine factory in the Montreal area. We're not gonna hurt you. That's Joe Pesci, by the way. He's joining us uh, today here. Um, we know that you're in there and that you're all alone. So there it is. Uh, federally funded uh, vaccine factory in Montreal area. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Woo! Look at the boots. He's got the boots on. He's got the b work boots on. Oh, my God. How are you kids doing, huh? Prime Minister Justin Trudeau took part today in a groundbreaking ceremony for biotechnology company Moderna's new mRNA factory in Laval, Quebec, a suburb of Montreal. The factory is expected to be completed in 2024 at the earliest and uh, produce 100 million doses of mRNA vaccines per year. Snakes? I don't know no snakes. So there it is right there. Per year! Sorry, guys, if I'm uh, kind of over-speaking here or loud. Please don't watch this on earbuds so you don't unsub me. Trudeau was uh, accompanied by several provincial and federal politicians today, including federal innovation minister. I'm not even going to go into that because nobody cares. So there it is right there, federally funded by taxpayers. Here, Miami, Dallas. And it's destroying... It's just destroying our country. The public sector keeps getting bigger here in Canada, and the private sector gets destroyed. Teachers on strike or, or education workers to get more money, while the private sector is barely getting their taxes paid this year from their last year's for this year's corp last year's corporate tax return cycle that ends this year. I'm talking to a lot of companies that are looking at shutting their doors, moving to the states, or cashing out what they can and moving to the states. Can't afford to live in Canada anymore. Judge rules Ford Jones, Mr. Mobility here, Mr. Mobility, here he is. Judge rules Ford and Jones immune from, from testifying at Emergencies Act inquiry. So if you guys, uh, the, the federal court, if you guys remember the Emergencies Act that in Ottawa that was um, called by the Canadian uh, government here, Trudeau, uh, initiated this act that was very illegal and it was just people protesting um, this inequality that we're facing and obviously protesting certain things I can't talk about it on here because I am not Russell Brand. So let's move on. And Canadian, this is actually really important because we've been covering this on the channel for years. This week's top stories, Canadian real estate buyers weren't stress tested for uh, this and Toronto sales dry up. So they're having troubles finding... In Canada right now, they're, tr they're having troubles finding first-time home buyers that are Canadian and non-foreign investors. And Canadians, 
don't make enough money. I mean, even though teachers are making eighty to one hundred and forty thousand dollars a year, doctors are making two hundred and forty thousand a year or whatnot or crazy amounts of money. The problem is, is the people in the the private sector, they, they just can't get into housing anymore. They can't. If you work a, a job at the dealership or you're working somewhere that's not government funded, you're having a really tough time, right? Uh, you're having a really tough time making ends meet. And I don't care what you do. You're having a really tough time in the private sector. So stress tested. So what a stress test means? Well, if they raise interest rates, if they raise interest rates, what you're borrowing, you could afford to pay. Even if they raise interest rates to an astronomical level, you could afford to pay for it. And what did we say? Well, I got to put this up there, folks, because there it is right there. This is actually five years ago. I don't know why it's saying four. Interest rates are headed to 9% by 2022. Must watch or inflation will creep up. Interest rates are headed to 9% by 2022. I actually show you the graph in the video by 2022. Interest rates need, need to slowly creep up to 9% to 11% by the end of 2022 or people won't be able to buy food. Yes, people will be priced out of food. Most economists and bankers, so this, that's just my opinion, what I'm saying there. Now, if people were stress tested properly to make sure they could afford uh, a payment adjustment, and they actually, nobody watched this video, but if people actually watched this video, they would have seen what I was talking about, but nobody really cares about what I have to say, which is fine. Now, midterm red wave in, uh, so we, we, we're calling a red wave election here. Uh, we've been calling a red wave uh, uh, election here in the midterms, but I've been wrong before. Even though nobody voted for Biden, he still won. Nobody voted for Macron, he, he won. The guy Lula down in Brazil, nobody voted for him, he still won. Uh, Trudeau snap election, we called it a year before. He was going to call a snap election and win. And, you know, nobody voted for him, but he still won. That's why we have 407,000 uncounted ballots in Ontario. So there it is right there. So midterm elections, live updates, Justice Department sending monitors uh, uh, to battleground states. So what is happening right here? With one day before November 8th election, both Democrat and Republic leaders portrayed confidence and optimism ahead uh, into the home stretch. So you guys know what's, how America's been falling apart fast and 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 it's been in destruction mode. President Joe Biden will stick close to home Monday campaigning in Maryland. Callo, C A L L O. I'm Jerry Callo. And nobody cares because nobody goes to these events, nobody attends those events, and for some reason they still win even though nobody wants these people there. You, they even pay people to go to these events and they and and, and nobody wants to be there. So the Justice Department will destroy, uh, deploy election monitors to 64 locations on election day to ensure compliance with voters' access laws and to prevent intimidation and interference. So we know USA Today is all fake news and they're reporting. So what is really happening on the ground in America? Here it is. 43% of Americans say they're worse off financially since Biden took office. And we actually did a video on our channel that I think it was... 53% of Canadians were worse off uh, than last year. So the, we're starting to get these numbers in, and these are just polls. But you got to, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But still, 43% of Americans say they're worse off financially since Biden took office. Canada's also worse off because they cut our Keystone Pipeline. When Biden took, the day that Biden took office, he cut the Keystone Pipeline uh, from Canada, and it really hurt a lot of our jobs. And I, I, I remember all those Biden supporters here in Canada, because Canada, and here where I live in, the town I live in, I don't know about all of Canada, but the town I, love, uh, I live in, they love Joe Biden. They love Hillary Clinton. They love Barack Hussein Obama. They love these people, right? And, and, and unfortunately, uh, a lot of people... Like, you should have seen the looks on their faces when Biden came in into office and shut down the Keystone Pipeline. And then people changed their tune around here and said, well, that's going green. He's going to save the world, and he's saving generations ahead. What about the generations now from freezing to death and starving to death and not have to depend on government bailouts or government support? Right, right. So there it is right there. A new poll shows 43% of Americans say their family's financial situations is worse than two years ago as inflation has made it harder for people to make ends meet. We're not going to hurt you. 
The new ABC News Washington Post survey released on Saturday on Sunday finds the share has doubled since President Joe Biden took office last year on January 20th, replacing Donald Trump. Inflation and economic discontent have endangered the Democratic Party's political chances on Tuesday midterm elections. So we know this is happening. Are they going to allow it, though? Big deal. These guys, are, okay, it's a big deal. They're destroying the world. They're destroying the country. They're destroying this. They're blatantly not in touch with reality. They're nuts. But are they going to be allowed? I mean, who's going to be allowed to win this election? That's what we need to be asking. Not that, oh, everyone's going to actually vote against these 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 Democrats. They will. But are they going to be allowed to win? Are the Republicans allowed to win this election? That's what we need to ask ourselves. It doesn't matter if they win on paper, on ballot, electronic, it's if they are allowed to win. All right, here we go. Democratic Party losses support among uh, uh, losses support among Hispanic Black voters before 2022 midterms. So, so they're losing support from Hispanic and Blacks, and the Democratic Party has lost Hispanic and Black voter support since the 2020 election. Two essential uh, demographics. The party needs to retain its fragile. Uh, intersectional coalition, according to a Wall Street. Yeah, they always use this language to make them. Yeah, so there it is right there. So, but the question we need to ask, would the Republicans be allowed to win this, even though they win it hands down? So there it is right there. Having a reunion or something? And uh, I'll be taking the service entrance. It's okay, I'll use the service entrance. I'll see you at nine. Now, th speaking of service entrance, this... Uh, Okay, I'm just gonna read it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna freak out. Prime Minister Sunka opens Su Sunak opens door to climate reparations for Pakistan and other third world governments. Wow. Wow. So they're going for climate preparations, and you know Canada. I'm surprised Canada is not first in front of this guy doing this. I'm ashamed that Trudeau isn't here first doing this before the UK government. I, I'm, I'm. I'm ashamed. Because usually our Canadian government loves to send money everywhere else but taking care of its own people and and trimming down its public sector so private sector could survive. But it's kind of sad how – but it is what it is. So there it is. Prime Minister Rishiki Sunk, uh, Sunka's government has uh, signaled it is open to discussing climate reparations for the likes of Pakistan as he prepares tax hikes and public service cuts at, uh, at home in the name of – physical responsibility. So what happens to all the people with the damaged hurricane down in Florida, flooding here in BC, Vancouver, where I lived here in Merritt, the flooding we have to deal with? What happens to us? I guess we don't count because they want to send our money away and disenfranchise and impoverish the middle class. That's been a war against the middle class for years, right? And it's something we've been talking about. So this is it right here. I look forward to reading your comments below on this thing. PM Sunak opens door to climate reparations for Pakistan and other third world governments. So there it is right there. I'm not going to get into it because it's all garbage. Because, you know, they had the acid rain in the 60s and 70s. They had the Ozone Layer Protection Act in the 80s. They had, they had you know, other channels are regurgitating all this stuff I've been saying and breaking it down from the Methane Protection Act from the 1880s. Other channels are taking this regurgitating, being like almost like a hero in the like front lines, you know? But what's going on here? So there it is right there. Let's move on. And so this is coming from the Daily Mail in the UK. I'm going to have to show this because you won't believe me. Fury as the CDC quietly replaces pregnant women with with pregnant people in flu vaccine advice to be inclusive to trans groups. So there it is. I'm not going to go into that because I don't want to get uh, shut down. Poland draws a line in the sand with the EU. We fulfilled the requirements and we are owed the funds, says Polish president. So we've been talking about them flipping the script. That's another word we say a lot on the channel here, flipping the script. And it's been actually been regurgitated all over the place, which is pretty cool. So there it is, says Polish president. So the Polish government says it will make no further concessions to the European Union in order to unlock tens of billions of EU funding, arguing that Poland has fulfilled all its obligations and Brussels owes, owes them the money. So Poland fulfilled the conditions set by European Commission regarding the payment of recovery funds. It is due. Polish President Andrzej Duda said 
He added that he doesn't not intend to answer any comments from Brussels on the matter. So there it is, totaling up to 110 billion euros. This will uh, hobble the Polish economy, which has suffered due to the global economic downturn, inflation, and the refugee crisis from from Ukraine. What about the refugee crisis from Africa or North Africa or wherever it's coming from for the last 10 years? I mean, they're, they're so this way, this way, this way they do it. They're smart. The refugee crisis from Ukraine. But, but, but who do we blame? They blame Russia. You, you see what I'm saying? It always, always trails back to Russia. Always trails back to Russia. And in por other important news, Algeria applies to join BRICS, says media. North African country already meets the most of the criteria for joining the economic bloc, according to its president. Guys, mark my words here on this Voice of the Commonwealth here. Mark my words. Angola and Mozambique will be joining BRICS nations too because Portuguese Americas are running there. Brazil is already one of the BRICS nations with Lula getting re um, illegally elected because no one voted for him, started the BRICS back in 11 and 2011 2012 so there it is there for you and taliban minister sees coal import deal with iran soon huge chess pieces moving around the world and iran and afghanistan will conclude a deal soon under which the islamic republic will import afghan coal minister of commerce and industries in the transitional taliban government uh nuruddin azizi has said so there it is right there. And the country hopes to that the untapped mineral deposits valued at $3 trillion could help bankroll its impoverished economy after years of U U.S.-led occupation. So there it is right there, guys. Thanks for joining and being part of the channel. Guys, don't forget to find me. You could find me on Odyssey. The channel looks like this if you guys want to be. And you could find episodes of Mike in the Night going back six, seven years where we are predicting, not post-dicting, and not stealing information from other channels or other ideas we actually run with original content here always original content there it is mike in the night 466 to be determined because things are changing by the hour so if you guys don't mind want to jump on this live and call into our show we had a lot of great call-ins on our last episode here don't forget to join us be part of the channel a lot of people leave it playing in the background don't i request i recommend you don't li listen to it on earbuds because the, the, the audio is all over the place. And I've been trying hard to fix the audio for years here. And it's been it's been an uphill battle. I'm not an audio tech. I'm a, I'm a nothing technician. I'm a nobody. And anyways, guys, thanks for watching, being part of the channel, and subscribing and liking. Mike Martin's here signing off. Red Tsunami Wave Ahead. I warned you guys to get out of the blue states of America. Mike Martin's here. I have spoken.